TV KPM. Assalamualaikum, selamat petang. Salam sejahtera kepada semua yang menonton Road to Success STPM 2020. Saya ini Saki, hos anda untuk episod kali ini jam 4 petang hingga 5 petang. Seperti biasa kita ada subjek yang akan kita bincangkan bersempena dengan peperiksaan STPM yang akan berlangsung insya-Allah bermula 6 April akan datang. Baiklah sebelum itu rakan-rakan semua ni saya ingatkan supaya kekal menjaga SOP di mana sahaja anda berada dengan memakai pelitup muka di tempat awam, jaga jarak sosial sekurang-kurangnya 1 meter, kerap cuci tangan menggunakan air dan sabun serta sanitasi tangan anda apabila perlu dan apabila anda sudah berada di dalam uh, situasi yang agak selamat barulah boleh buka mask. Baiklah sebelum itu ni saya nak ingatkan bahawa hari ini topik kita adalah Mathematics M. Mungkin ada yang agak keliru ada Mathematics M and ada Mathematics T dan Mathematics M merupakan subjek yang kini uh, boleh dijawab dalam dua bahasa. So once in a while throughout the episode I might be speaking English a little bit here and there dengan cikgu yang akan bersama-sama dengan kita pada hari ini agak-agaknya siapa guru yang akan bersama-sama dengan kita ha, semestinya beliau adalah seorang yang sangat-sangat berpengalaman jom kita berkenalan dengan beliau kita tonton profil ini Penonton semua, jom kita mempersilakan Cikgu Zana ataupun Cikgu Zanariah dari SMK Tunku Ampuan Dura, Seremban Negeri Sembilan. Apa khabar Cikgu? Alhamdulillah, Nisa. Ya, Alhamdulillah. Lemah-lemah, lemah lembut Cikgu orang ini saya kat sini. Alamak, macam mana mata pelajaran kita hari ini agak-agak di sekolah kan? Uh. Cikgu Zana merupakan Cikgu yang garang atau tidak? <laughs> wait and see. Ay, wait and see. Alamak, kita pula yang gementar. Jadi yang di rumah, jangan gementar-gementar. Stay sehingga ke hujung rancangan. Yes. Jom Cikgu, kita nak ke meja di sana. Okay. Seperti yang Nisa sebutkan tadi, antara SOP yang kita perlu patuhi adalah dengan mensanitasi tangan anda. Silakan. Okay. Ha -ha, sanitasi tangan anda apabila perlu dan dengan menjaga jarak sekurang-kurangnya satu meter bahu ke bahu. Dan apabila anda sudah berada di dalam situasi dan jarak yang selamat dan perlu membuka pelitup muka anda, silakan cikgu. Yes. Jangan lupa untuk simpan pelita muka anda di dalam bekas yang bersih agar boleh digunakan kembali sekiranya masih bersih. Kalau dah kotor tu, tukar pelita muka yang baru, bau yang lebih kalau ada dan jangan melebihi penggunaan sehingga 8 jam. Baiklah. Cikgu, tadi saya ada sebut uh, Mathematics M, ada uh, Mathematics M dan juga Mathematics T. Mungkin untuk permulaan cikgu boleh terangkan kepada penonton kita apa beza Mathematics M dan Mathematics T. Model dengan tambahan ke? Bukan kan? Uh, no. Okay, the difference between mm -hmm. M and T is that M is for management. Management. Whereas T means for uh, technology. Technology, wow. Technical. Technical. Uh, so, students who are taking Mathematics M are from the social science students mm -hmm. who are interested to pursue their studies in um, in, in uh, finance, finance and actuar actuaries ah, uh, accountancy sangat-sangat menarik yes. jadi rakan-rakan yeah. di rumah pelajar-pelajar uh, perakaunan -pelajar khususnya boleh memberi perhatian yang agak lebih sediakan pen dan kertas untuk yes. episod kali ini tapi sebelum kita meneruskan pelajaran kita kita berehat dahulu kita akan jumpa anda selepas ini jangan yes. ke mana-mana mm -hmm. Didik TV KPM Didik TV KPM Didik TV KPM Bagi subjek Max M, topik yang saya paling suka adalah Critical Path Analysis It's because interesting path the way how present the LA and LN networks and from there we can determine the critical activity and the times when the project will be complete and so on for the part, the heart is for me is the interest, annuity and the depreciation because some question will test you how to use the present value and the future value. Thank you. The, my favorite topic in Mass M is interest, annuity and depreciation. The topics I found hard to understand is linear programming. Saya rasa bahagian yang susah ialah topic game theory. Saya mengambil Maths M kerana saya ingin further study course yang berkaitan dengan matematik di universiti. 
Saya rasa cara untuk lulus MATSM ialah membuat latihan secara berterusan. Bagi saya, semester 2 dan semester 3 adalah lebih senang berbanding semester 1. Untuk semester 3, saya rasa uh, chapter yang paling susah dikuasai oleh saya ialah uh, Chapter yang terakhir yaitu Game Theory For me, the most favorite topic is actually critical path analysis because it's very easy to understand and it's very beneficial when it comes to management field That's all for me, thank you Didik TV KPM Itu dia pendapat rakan-rakan kita mengenai subjek kita hari ini iaitu Mathematics M uh, Cikgu Zana tadi ada yang mengatakan um, it quite hard at the beginning and then it turns out a little bit uh, easy afterwards. Yes. Ada yang rasa macam, oh ada topik asal minat, ada yang tak minat. Susah ke sebenarnya Mathematics M ni? Uh, it depends on the students. Okay? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's that uh, if you like the subject, mm -hmm. uh, you tend to like all the topics. Mm -hmm. okay? So, But there are one of those uh, topics that uh, looks like confusing, mm -hmm. but after they've done the exercises, it's quite easy to, yeah. set, uh, it's quite easy to do. Ya, seperti yang rakan kita, salah seorang rakan kita katakan tadi kalau buat uh, latihan yes, dengan yeah. uh, apa, seri, kerap dan berpanjangan, insya Allah anda akan memahami topik hmm. yang dipelajari. Baiklah, uh, Syekh Guzana, I am not alone today. Yes. I have brought my friends over here for our episode today. So yes. kita nak mempersilakan rakan-rakan dari SMK Tunku Ampuan Dura Seremban Negeri Sembilan. Hello everybody, hi. Hi. Hi, how are you guys? You guys can actually turn on the mic for yes. me. <laughs> turn on the mics. Chill. Do you get? Oh, okay. Ada uh, kawan-kawan dengar dengar Nisa tak? Can you hear? Can Nisa? you hear us? Well, I don't think they hear us oh, at the yeah. moment. Uh, Cik Guzana, it's okay. Kita akan mm. berkenalan dengan rakan-rakan kita sebentar lagi. Uh, tapi kita dapat lihat rakan-rakan kita sudah bersedia dan diharapkan yang di rumah pun bersedia untuk topik kita pada hari ini iaitu Mathematics M. Tanpa membuang masa, jom Cik Guzana kita mulakan. Okay, terima kasih Nisa. Right, good afternoon and salam sejahtera. Salam to everyone who's watching Road to Success STPM 2020. And not forgetting to all the STPM Mathematics M candidates for 2020, which in the studio and also back at home. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, today I'll be sharing on the tips and techniques on how to score paper three. And as like I said, uh, students, please get ready your past year questions from 2013 to 2014 and get your solution ready and later check whether you have done it correctly. Right, Anissa, yeah. let's start with uh, getting to know. This is my profile, okay? So let's start getting to know the format of paper three. Mm -hmm. As the BM sings, says that, tak kenal maka tak maka cinta. Tak cinta yeah. So today, let's look at the format of paper three first. Let's get to know the format so that kita boleh mula bercinta yeah. cinta Cinta dengan paper 3, paper 3. Mathematics M yes. okay. So, the format of paper 3 The question asks all, all subjective okay, And they have to answer the question in 1 hour 30 minutes The paper consists of two sections Section A There are a total of 6 questions And the total mark is 45 Students have to answer all the 6 questions in section B, there are two questions, but students need to answer only one question, which carry a total of 15 marks. So, students, you have to answer seven questions within one hour and 30 minutes. So, my advice is, when you practice, time yourself, okay, so that you can finish the section A in 60 minutes. So, roughly, 8 to 10 minutes per question. And for section B, spend about 20 minutes so that you are left with 10 minutes to check and arrange your answer. Okay, students? Now, students will be tested from all the six topics in the financial and decision mathematics component, which consists of interest, energy and depreciation. If you listen just now, some students said they, they like interest, yeah. they like energy and depreciation, but one student said it's quite difficult to understand. Then there's cost, revenue and profit. 
linear programming, critical parts analysis, inventory models, game theory. Now, in section A, one question will be asked from each of the topic, hence the sixth question. Okay? Whereas in section B, the two questions can come from any two out of the six topics. So in other words, the students must master all the concepts and skills in all these six topics. So they cannot predict what will come out. But all the six will come out in section A. Okay. Only for section B, it's randomly picked any two out of the six topics. Now, let me share you some tips on what the student must do on the actual exam day. Okay, right. First, do read the questions, all the questions carefully. Do read all the questions carefully. And for section B, read thoroughly the two questions so that you will make a wise choice. Okay, otherwise, Time will be wasted yes. to move on to the next question when you realise that the one you are doing is difficult. Yes. So please read the two questions. And then when answering the question, please answer according to the instruction given in the question. Why? Because the instruction will determine the methods to be used when solving. For example, Use the flat rate depreciation method to find the book value. So the task, would, the instruction here is use the flat rate depreciation method. So you have to use this method. This is arahan. You cannot use other method. Okay. Next, when answering, you must also answer according to the question requirement. This determines how to write the answer. Okay, so for example, give your answer to the nearest one. The students must run off their final answer to the nearest one. Okay, so if you do not follow the instruction or the requirement, you will bound to lose the marks. Yes. Okay, so marks will be deducted. Next tip, use the time wisely. Yes. Okay. Because time is very precious. Okay. So how can we tell how the amount of time to spend for each question? So we look at the marks allocated at the end of each question. Okay. The marks allocated give a fair indication on how much time to spend for each question. Okay. So it's not worth spending 10 minutes for a two marks question. Okay. Right. If you Still cannot answer and the time is already exceeded. Mm -hmm. Okay, please proceed to the next question and redo later. Yes. Do, not... Do not wait. Yes. Do not wait. If you have difficulties answering yes. one specific question, just move on to the next question first. Yes, that's right. Okay. And then for my advice, mm -hmm. so always start each question on a new sheet of question. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, on a new sheet of answer paper, mm -hmm. so that it's easy for you to. Go back to the paper, go back to the question that you have skipped. Okay? So that is my advice to start a question on a new sheet of answer paper. And then, okay, this is the most common mistake by students. Mm -hmm. They tend not to show all the working because they think that it's a two mark question, so it's not necessary to show the working. Mm -hmm. Even though it's two marks, okay, you have to show the working, okay, because this is maths. Okay. Marks will be awarded if you have the correct working, if it leads to the wrong answer. Mm -hmm. okay. But marks or the full marks will not be awarded if you have the correct answer but no working shown. Okay, students, are you with me? All my students? Everybody's okay. okay. If you guys yeah. are listening to us right now, give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. Everybody okay? okay All thank right. you. They're with us. All right. Okay, lastly, do not despair, okay, do not give up if the first part out of two or three parts of the question puzzles you. So my advice, read again the question. Why? Because the questions normally contain information, clue, so that the students can proceed on to do the later part. So do not 
despair, do not give up. Okay? Don't panic. <laughs> okay. Now, looking for keywords. Keywords is very important because it guides students on what to be done in solving. Okay, for example, write down state. So students must know that they have they only need to give the answer mm -hmm. without having to show the working. So time is safe. Then calculate, find, determine. Method and working must be shown. Okay, notice that the third keyword, deduce hence. Okay. Notice that it's in red because mm -hmm. I want the students to be alert of this keyword. Most of the students tend to overlook the word hence because hence means you have to use the given or the previous result in the first part of the question to solve the second part of the question. If they were to use different results, okay, might, um, probably they will lose marks again. Okay? Uh, so please watch out for the word hence. Okay? Next, the keyword proving. So for proving, all the steps must be shown and include the application of formulas, laws and theorem. And do not forget to conclude your solutions. And then we have draw, drawing diagrams. Normally involves activity on notes, activity on arcs. So make it simple and neat and clean and label it correctly using consistent convention. Consistent convention means the, the term used in your classroom. Okay, jangan reka term sendiri. Because sometimes student ni suka mereka cipta ya. Wow, uh, yes. so advanced eh, student yeah. sekarang. Uh, so use the consistent convention in the classroom. Mm -hmm. See, they are smiling. <laughs> okay, now, these two keywords is very important. Mm -hmm. See the comparison when the keyword says, draw graphs or construct graph or sketch graph mm. so let's look for drawing graph when the when the question says drawing graph okay, you have to draw an accurate graph so you must use the graph paper and students must choose a suitable scale to draw the graph mm. then all the points must be plotted and make sure the graph drawn is a smooth curve so you must use a sharp pencil and don't forget, the axis and the graph must be labelled accurately. But for sketching the graph, is simpler compared for drawing the graph. For graph sketching, you do not have to use the graph paper. Okay? And students also do not have to plot all the points. But they must show the general shapes, which is very important. The shape must be correct. Okay? based on the function and the necessary points must be indicated for example the x and y intercept mm -hmm. okay, must be indicated clearly in the graph and also the maximum minimum point if there is any but for drawing and sketching they insist that they must label the axis and the graph accurately this is very important point they have to label be it drawing, be it sketching. Okay, so what happens if the question says sketch the graph, but the students use the graph paper? What do you think this will happen? I think they will still get marks, I guess. Yes. Yes, okay. They will get marks, but they will lose time. Mm -hmm. Time will be uh, used up because yeah. when drawing the graph is so time consuming, banyak masa diperlukan mm -hmm. because you need to draw an accurate graph. Okay? So you you won't be penalized, but you will be losing your time. Yes. Okay? So you have to use the time wisely. Okay, now, this is very crucial tip, how you present your answer. Like I said, we are in a relation with pepper tree. Yes. <laughs> so you have to have a proper closure. Mm. Okay, so how do you close your Solution, meaning that how you conclude your final answer is very important. Okay, firstly, the first tip is handwriting. Okay, All right, students, handwriting. See, Chu is laughing already, smiling. Make sure it's neat and readable. Okay, Chu, 
Okay, and the final answer must always be simplified. Shiu, are you guilty as charged? Yes. <laughs> because he smiled as soon as a teacher mentioned about handwriting. Uh, yes. I mean, my handwriting is not that good too, so it's okay. His handwriting is yeah. like a doctor. But my examination handwriting. must be neat and readable. Yes. Yes, neat and readable. Yes. And then the final answer must be in simplified form, especially for fractions. Always check whether it's in simplified form. And then the unit RM must be stated because paper tree involves a lot of money. 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 Okay, because it involves yes. financial. Okay, so it involves cost, sales and payment for chapter two, uh, for topic two just now. Mm -hmm. We have cost, revenue and uh, profit. Yes. And also topic five, we have inventory models. Mm -hmm. So it, uh, it involves a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So make sure you write down the unit RM. But for other units, okay, you are encouraged to state whatever units given in the question. Tak buat pun tak apa. Okay? But RM is a must when it deals with money. For example, in STPM 2014, okay, the students are required to present, sorry, the students are required to find the present value of payment. Okay, here, okay, the word is payment, so it means that we are uh, means that the money are involved. Okay, so when money is involved, make sure your final answer, the unit RM, must be written. Okay, if you look at this formula, this is the present compound amount formula. Okay, students recall that compound amount formula. A is the accrued amount. Okay, this is the interest compounding period. This is the number of payment. Okay, now, answers involving decimal numbers or mm -hmm. decimal values, okay? So, for interest rate, okay, okay for interest rate, mm -hmm. the final answer must be in percentage, percentage form. form. And it must be reduced or rounded off to two decimal places mm -hmm. because of the word rate, okay? So, rate means it must be percentage form. All right. All right. Cikgu well, Zana, before that, are you guys are still with us? Yeah. Our friends over here? Do you want to ask anything? Any questions? Any questions? Okay, I guess we all need a little break, uh, Cikgu Zana. And our friends at home juga, kalau anda perlukan rehat, ah, cepat-cepat pergi ke tandas jika perlu dan kekal bersama kami selepas ini. Uh, I'll see you guys after this. Jangan pergi ke mana-mana, okay? Didik TV KPM Didik TV KPM Coming back to Road to Success as TPM 2020 masih bersama saya Nisa Cikgu Zana serta rakan-rakan dari SMK Tumku Ampuan Adura Seremban Negeri 9. Baiklah setakat ini tadi Cikgu Zana dah berkongsi sedikit pengenalan kepada kertas peperiksaan kertas 3 paper 3 for Mathematics M. Jom Cikgu Zana kita teruskan. Okey saya Silakan, sambung balik. Yeah. Okey. When answers involving decimal values, okey now we are, we are dealing with we order point. So make sure your reorder point must be in integer, okay? But before that, I would like to state this condition is very important for you to get the full mark. So when uh, the final answer must be rounded off to integer. Here we have 833.33, so please round off to 833 units. Okay. You can also Chair, round may off... I? Yes? Yes? Teacher, may I ask a question? Can yes. I round off to 834? Yes, you may. Yes. Okay, so you can run off to 833 or to 834 units. Okay, go? Yes. Okay. Okay, thank you, teacher. Okay, welcome. Teacher. Yeah. yeah? Yes? Good. Yes, Chiu. Chiu, can you speak a little bit louder? Oh, uh, can okay. you hear, Chiu? Yes, yes. Chiu, uh. just now the question read, read means it must be in percentage form, right? Yes, it must be in percentage form. Without the percentage form... If I form, accidentally write in percentage form, I just write in zero point something, uh, I will get full marks or what? It must be written percentage at the back. Or you can write percentage okay. in front. Okay? All right, all right. Okay. Good. All right. Okay. Right. In working, please do not run off too early. Mm -hmm. Okay, the values, for example, here, when you calculate the consumer surplus, okay, you have to integrate the demand function Okay, when you substitute the lower limit set P, 
make sure it should be at least four significant figure. Okay, notice that the first uh, solution, the students have rounded off to three significant figure. Eventually, the values is not accurate. Okay, but for the second set of solutions, okay, the students have rounded off to at least four significant figure, and the answer RM one three zero and fifty five cent is more accurate compared to the second solution. Okay, so make sure you do not run off too early in the working. Okay, next to find the maximum or minimum values, you must show the testing whether it is maximum or minimum. For example, STPM 2014-2A, although the question already state to minimize the average cost, and you already obtain the number of units x equal 18, but you must include this testing to get the full mark. Mm -hmm. So this is the condition for the students to get full mark. Without the testing, they lose one mark. Okay. So that's how we mark. That's how the students must obtain the full marks by adding the condition. Similarly, when you formulate a linear programming model, do not forget to state the non-negativity condition. So what is the non-negativity the non-negativity condition? Mm -hmm. Is x y greater or equal zero. You must include. So this is called a linear programming model. Okay, the students are uh, the students should know by now how to formulate a linear programming model. But most students will tend to forget this condition. Mm. Again, with this condition, you won't get extra mark, but you will get the total full mark. Without this condition, you will lose one mark. See how important is the condition. Yes. Okay. Then, when you're drawing activity on arc or activity on nodes, Please, students, I know that most of you below exam, you are panicking and you tend to uh, forget or uh, overlook. Mm -hmm. You must use arrows, not lines, okay? Oh. Arrows to represent the activity for AOA and the arrows represent the precedent relation for AON, okay? And for a complete network, you must include the key, mm -hmm. okay? For example, in STPM 2014, Ulangan 3 in question 5A, you are required to draw an activity on node network for the project and indicating the activities, indicating the activities duration, earlier start times and later start time. Notice the total mark is 7. seven. Okay, So you must spend some time doing this question. So this is the complete AON network. Okay, activity on nodes. The square boxes are called nodes. So, notice that the arrows are written and the key is indicated. Is there any questions, students? Are you with me? Okay. What yes. will happen if I forget to write the key? Okay. Obviously, you lose one mark. Okay? Obviously, you will lose one mark. So again, this is the condition for students to get full mark. Yes. Okay, all the small small things. That's why I say closure is very important. Yes. And then formula. Please, students, familiarize yourself with the formula given in the question paper. But sad to say, paper treat not many not many formulas are given. It's only from topic one, interest, entity, and depreciation, mm -hmm. and topic five, inventory models. So make sure you understand the symbols, okay? You understand the symbols, what it means. And then you go back, try to figure out what is not given in the question paper. If you look at interest annuity, there are a few formulas not stated. Can you recall the formula not stated? Anyone? Even, yes? Anybody want to answer? What formula is not stated in what the question paper? What formula is not stated? Core? They are all examining the, the, the question, the yes. formula really, really carefully. Oh, can they see the slides? They can see the slides, right? Mm. No, you guys can, can see the slides? Mm. 
Oh, they can't oh, see, they cannot the see the slide. Okay. Okay. Right. It's okay. Uh, it's all right. Cikgu Zana can, okay. can share with right. us. Later on, you look at your question paper, try to figure out what are the formulas not stated in the question paper. Okay. So you go back, that is your task. Even the students back home, yes. you go back and do your extra homework, find out what are the formulas not given in paper three. But take note, in paper three, there's a lot of processes involved. For example, simplex method, lots of process, and then lots of construction, graphical method for linear programming, the activity on node, the activity on arc, and there's a lot of analyzing for game theory, in fact, inventory model pun you have to use uh, anal analyzing, okay, and evaluation to get the answer. So for form six, all the questions are k bar, yeah. All the questions are k bar. Okay, let us practice, okay. See whether you can apply all the tips and techniques that so have been ready? mentioned. Some of them are smiling widely. Okay. <laughs> Make sure all of you are ready because I'm going to test you. All right, look at this question, question one from STPM 2013. Okay, you get, like I said, you get yourself ready with the question paper. Okay, if you cannot see or read the slides, never mind, you have the question paper with you. Right, now, can somebody state what is the instruction of the question? Who can answer what is the instruction of the question? Uh, teacher. Yes. Yes. Uh, using the reducing balance method of depreciation. Yes, you are right, Wendy. Yes. You have to use the oh, sorry. you have to use the reducing balance method of depreciation. That is the instruction. So, what is the keywords find in this question? Perform the keywords. Wendy, can you Wendy? Do you find the keywords? Can you state the keywords? Uh, who wants to answer? Okay, who can besides help? Wuling, anybody who wants to answer what are the keywords in this yeah, question? Clear. Calculate, yes. Hence. Yes, hence. the most important keyword, hence. Meaning that you have to use the annual rate of depreciation to answer but the second part that is to calculate the book value at the end of six years. Okay, let's look at the solutions. Okay, usually, like I told you, you have to extract all the informations from the question. Okay, this is also a skill to extract information from the question. Now, when the question says, instruct you, use the reducing balance depreciation method. So make sure you use the correct formula. So this is the formula, okay? Reducing balance depreciation method, and then you can also use this formula. It's the same, just that this is the basic formula. Okay, this one, the R has become the subject of the method. Now, I already found my R. My R is 0 0.2440. I run off to four significant figure. So, do you think my answer is complete? Is it complete? No. No. Why is it? Why is not complete? Because we must state the percentage form. Yes. Why yes. percentage form? Huh? Why is it why in percentage, percentage form? form? Because they have rate. Yes. <laughs> the word rate. Yes. Okay. So you have to conclude in percentage form because the question says find the annual rate of depreciation. Good, Wunling. At least you are listening to my briefing just now. Yes. Right now. Find the book value at the end of six years. Okay, again, I presented two sets of solution. So, which solution is correct? Which one? Which one is the correct? correct solution. My the left hand side or my right hand side? Yeah, uh, right hand side. Right hand side. Why, Why is it? Why is that so? Uh, because uh, there is rounded to two decimal places and is that the uh, unit? Yes. Uh, yes, very good. Why is it? Very good. So the the value is rounded to two decimal places because of sen. Sen must always be in two decimal places, okay? And then the unit RM is written because book value involves money. When money is concerned, please write down the unit RM. So notice that 
for this for this first set of solution not that the working is incorrect the working is correct mm -hmm. but the closure is not complete okay because the students have forgotten to run off the two decimal places for sen and the unit rm is not written mm -hmm. so these cases memang banyak terjadi yeah. yeah that's how they lose marks not that they don't know how to solve they know how to solve but they don't know how to conclude okay Okay, now let's move on to the next question. Okay. We have here the total cost for producing X units of a product is given by. Okay, that is the book, that is the total cost function. Okay, this is the total cost function. And then the marginal marginal revenue is given as. Okay, most students will understand this symbol. Mm -hmm. This means marginal revenue. This is the consistent convention. R for revenue, C for cost. Okay? So find the profit function. So what is the keyword here? Who knows the keyword? What is the keyword here? Chong? Chong? I want to hear your voice. Chong? Chong? Are you with me? Are you with me, Chong? Yes. Right. Yes. So can you please share with us what is the keyword to this question? What is the keyword, Chong? Yes. Huh? I, I think the line is I, not I that simple. Like a little okay. bit, uh, slow. Anybody besides Chong? Can other friends help him? Yes. Ho? Chen Hong? Ho, you are quiet today. Why? Fine. Fine. Yes, fine. So the keyword is fine, meaning that you have to show working. Mm -hmm. Method and working must be shown. Yes. So let's look at the solution. So first, you must find the revenue function. Mm -hmm. To find the revenue function, we integrate the marginal revenue. Mm -hmm. So when you integrate the marginal revenue, do not forget to include the constant of integration C. Okay, you must state. Even though the value of the constant of integration is zero, you still need to state C. And when you conclude, okay, this is your revenue function. So please remember, you must show the working to find the value of the constant of integration. Okay, because the keyword just now was find. Fine. So they have to show the method. Mm -hmm. Now, how to get the profit function? Okay, who wants to give me the answer? What's the formula to get the profit function? For? Uh, revenue function minus cost function. Okay. Profit function, Px, is revenue function minus the cost function. Cost function. Okay, so what is your revenue function? So your revenue function is 300x minus 0.4x squared minus the cost function that's given in the question. Mm -hmm. Okay, notice that I have highlighted here, you must show the subject of the profit function Px in working mm -hmm. in order to get the method marks. Okay, you must show the subject Px or else you lose the method marks. Yeah. Yeah? And then when you conclude, it's advisable to state the subject of the profit function. So when you conclude, please write correctly because we don't know certain year the examiner are very strict but certain yes. year is acceptable. Mm -hmm. yeah? Saya pun tak tahu kadang-kadang yeah. diterima pula, kadang-kadang tak terima sebab saya bukan pemeriksa so I don't know. Mm -hmm. But sometimes right. when the result went down, I just wonder what happened. Yeah. <laughs> so students at home and also our friends here at studio, setakat ini Cikgu Zana telah berkongsi cara-cara untuk uh, conclude the answer properly so to avoid a losing marks. Yes. Kecil-kecil itulah kadang-kadang itulah yang kita lepas pandang dan boleh hilang markah. Jadi yes. kita nak berehat sebentar dah uh, berehat sebentar maaflah tersasu-sasu pula saya. Yes, saya. Berehat sebentar jangan ke mana-mana kita jumpa selepas ini. Didi TV KPM. Didi TV KPM. Kembali ke Road to Success STPM 2020. Jom cikgu, ha. tadi cikgu dah highlightkan cara-cara untuk anda tidak hilang markah. Jadi, what's next? Let's okay. go. Let's check. So, now I want to highlight 
uh, graph sketching. Mm -hmm. Okay, here the keyword is sketch. So make sure you remember what are the characteristics of graph sketching. And here the instruction is you must sketch on the same axis. Okay, that is the instruction. So for graph sketching, not remember, you don't need to use the graph paper. Mm -hmm. So here I'm showing you two sets of solution again. So now can somebody tell me why solution B has two marks? Solution A has one mark. Why is this solution A has lost one mark? The total mark is two marks. Because, because solution A is... Mm -hmm. Because solution board line are not labelled. Yes. Ah, yes. So see the difference because remember what I said? Label the axis and the graph accurately. Mm -hmm. So for solution A, the lines are not labelled. Okay, for solution A, the lines are not labelled. Okay, so good. Was it Chong just now? Yes. Okay, thank you, Chong. So you ha you are you have been listening to me. Well done. <laughs> okay, now for question three, notice the difference between uh, the previous question and this question. Now you need to represent all the constraints graphically. So the keyword here is represent the constraint graphically, meaning that you have to use the graph paper and the instruction is shade the feasible region and the keyword is determined, meaning that you have to show working. So all these are clues for you to give the correct solution. So when they say represent graphically, you have to, graphically, you have to use the graph, use graph paper. paper. And you have to draw the lines accurately. Yes. So the straight line, the first straight line, so Remember how to draw a straight line? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Plot two points correctly. Mm -hmm. And then this is the second line. And this is the third line. And remember the instruction? Shade the feasible region. So the feasible region is bounded by the three lines. And then determine the optimum point P. So you have to show the search line. You have to show the search line. When you draw the search line, you have to label the search line. Translate and look at the point that touches the last point in this shaded region that will be your maximum point and show the working how you find the intersection point between the two lines yes so substitute to find the optimum value of p okay next question question four okay this is a simple question you are given the aoa network okay let's look here we have a variable x and a variable y okay so you need to determine, remember the keyword determine, determine, meaning that you have to show working. But part B state means that answer shown without working. And give a reason, that is the instruction. So you have to give a reason. So again, I'm showing you two sets of solution. The first set only get two marks. Okay, just now I said you might uh, lose marks. Okay, mm -hmm. and here is four marks. So why is it here we have four marks? Here two marks. You lost two marks here. Because the first question is to determine. Yes, good Nisa. You have been paying attention <laughs> to my class. Yeah. Okay. Right. So uh, new by... candidate of a CPM, I guess. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So X, make sure you know how to get X. Mm -hmm. X uh, comes from three possibilities. A uh, ten plus four of 5 plus 3 or 7 plus 5 so choose x maximum this is the forward pass and y is the backward pass so you have 2 minus and for y we have only 2 arrows so we have 16 minus 6 or 19 minus 3 okay mm -hmm. so make sure working must be shown to get full marks right. okay next state the critical part mm -hmm. okay to state the critical part you must identify the critical activities. So the critical activities are C, H, K and M. So how you write the part is very important. So we must write as C-H-K-M because it is a part. The reason is the total float of, of all the activities is zero. Can we accept? C, H, M, C, H, K, M? Not accepted. Why? A part is a laluan, satu root, 
Okay. Yeah. But here, this there is no root. Mm -hmm. It's just activities. Okay. So that's the difference between a part and activities. Okay. Okay. The last question. If you mentioned just now, two students said they do not like game theory. <laughs> Actually, game theory is easy because it involves uh, matrix. This is a pair of matrix. This is a two by three pair of matrix. When you understood the concept, is going to be very simple. Mm -hmm. Again, the task word is determine. determine. So you have to show working. But the question states optimal strategy. Why? Why did I emphasize on optimal strategy? The word mixed strategy are not stated. Mm -hmm. So the students must determine whether the game is unstable. So by now, I think all of them know how to show that the game is unstable. So what must you find first? Anybody? Who knows? Uh, find the min yes? min Pardon? Find the min max and max min. Yes, find the min max value or the max min value. So the max min value comes from the row minimum value. For each row, there's a minimum value. So the max min value is zero. And the min max value is from this uh, column values. So the minimum of the maximum is two. Here, the maximum of the minimum is zero. Since the values are not the same, so there's no settle point. So the game is said to be unstable. So the students must apply mixed strategy. Okay. Now, there are three methods mm -hmm. in solving uh, the game theory to find the optimal strategy for both players. Okay, the first method is the easiest method that I have shown you here. Okay, this is called the formula method. You can use the equalization method and you can use the graphical method. However, I do not encourage you to use graphical method unless the question instructed you to. Okay? Now, first, you have to uh, observe, analyze the pair of matrix, see whether you can apply the dominant strategy. Mm -hmm. If you can apply the dominant strategy, go ahead, apply. Because why? We can reduce it to a 2 by 2 pair of matrix. So once you have reduced to a 2 by 2 pair of matrix, then you can apply the formula. P is the probability of player 1 to play strategy 1. Okay, sorry. Player P, okay, to play strategy 1. Mm -hmm. Whereas Q is uh, the strat is the probability for player Q to play strategy 1. Mm -hmm. Okay, now. So just substitute the values. See how simple? You substitute the values. Okay? And P is 2 over 5. And you substitute the values of C, B, A, B, C, D, and you get 2 over 5. 2 over 5. Okay. So the optimal strategy for player P is 2 over 5, 3 over 5. 2 over 5 represents strategy 1 of player P. 3 over 5 represents strategy, strategy 2 of player P. Okay. You can leave your answer in this form. Or you can write in words. But I discourage my students to write in words. Kenapa, Cikgu? It's going to be very lengthy. Okay. Okay. Let me say it in words. So the optimal strategy for player P is to play strategy 1 with a probability of 2 over 5. And to play strategy 2 with a probability of 3 over 5. That's why I discourage my students to write in words. Okay. And then, uh, player Q. I'm giving you two sets of answer. Mm -hmm. So which is the accurate one? Which is the accurate answer for player okay. Q? Who knows? Who knows? Second. Second one. Second one. Why? Why? Because they are play strategy for player Q. They are? They are how many? Strategy. Yes, they are three Q. strategies strategy. for player Q. Good. This is strategy one, remember, for player Q. Strategy 2, strategy 3. So since you have deleted column 3, column 3 is the dominant column. So you have to put 0. So meaning that Q will never play strategy 3. Okay. Uh, itu yang students tak suka sebab it involves probability. Actually probability ni senang. Yeah? 
So when you delete column 3, the probability becomes zero. So yeah. the correct answer is this the one. The second one. Yeah. Okay. Saya rasa kan Encik Guzana, apa pun soalan, whatever the question or the topics are, uh, kalau rajin membuat ulang kaji, uh, di sekolah jangan malu bertanya. Yes. Uh, I think the teachers are all open to help you guys to excel in your exam. Uh, jangan malu bertanya, kalau ada yang tak faham, ulang kaji dengan rakan-rakan, guru. Uh, untuk menguasai sesuatu topik sekiranya hmm. anda masih ada rasa ragu-ragu maklumlah STPM tidak lama lagi akan bermula insyaallah bermula 6 April ini yes. jadi pastikan anda bersedia and not to lose any marks at uh, some small parts uh, supaya kita dapat memaksimumkan markah supaya result tu nanti keluar yes uh, macam yes. tu reactionnya nanti insyaallah uh, uh, but uh, Nisa yeah. uh, let me share some uh, what we what most what most two teachers mm -hmm. are facing yes. normally the students will score in paper 2 and paper 3 mm -hmm. because paper 3 uh, it involves their knowledge on accountancy and mm -hmm. most of them are accountancy students okay. they do account so that's why they score in paper 3 they do economy that's why they score in paper 3 because part of the topic comes from economy mm -hmm. part of the topics come from accountancy so like i said they normally score in paper 3 Paper two. However, I do not know why they have difficulties in scoring paper one. Because paper one uh, is from the algebra and right. calculus component. All right. So probably they do not like they mm -hmm. don't like mm -hmm. additional mathematics. They have to have that in order to score paper one. Okay, baiklah. Thank you so much, Cikgu Zana. Thank you, our friends here from SMK. Uh, Tunku Ampuan Dura Seremban uh, kerana bersama-sama dengan kami pada hari ini dan diharapkan yang menonton di rumah mendapatkan input-input daripada perkongsian Cikgu Zana sepanjang satu jam kita bersiaran. Uh, selamat maju jaya kepada semua yang akan mengambil STPM uh, Mathematics M khususnya. Kita akan jumpa dia besok akan datang. Uh, kita jumpa lagi insyaAllah Cikgu Zana. Jangan yes. lupa segala tips yang Cikgu Zana dah kongsi ke tadi beri perhatian keywords. Pastikan you understand the questions so that uh, you know what what method they are going to be used. Yes. Uh, jadi diharapkan membantu anda untuk menjawab perasaan. Yang lain semua okey ya? Our yep. friends over here, give me a thumbs up. Thumbs up. All right. So thank you so much, everybody. I'll yes. see you guys. Bye. Okay. Good teacher. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you students, and thank you everyone for watching. Did it TV KPM. Because of the pandemic, the STBM exam has been postponed for quite long. He's going to take his. STPM exam soon. I hope everything will go smooth and he will get good result and get admission to a better university. Sebagai seorang ayah, pastilah saya berharap anak saya akan mendapat keputusan yang cemerlang. Tapi saya amat yakin bahawa beliau akan mendapat keputusan cemerlang sebab saya memang nampak setiap hari dia memang berusaha dalam pembelajaran. Believe as yourself. You can do it.